Welcome to Buckeye Turf Podcast. My name is Carl Dannerberger, Professor of Turfgrass Science at The Ohio State University. The topic of this presentation is anaerobic soils, the impact on root respiration. In a previous presentation we discussed photosynthesis, which is the process by which turfgrass plants capture the sun's radiant energy and convert it into a usable energy form known as ATP. ATP is stored in compounds known as sugars, carbohydrates, and starches. The overall photosynthetic equation is shown here. Carbon dioxide, water, and radiant energy, or light, from the sun is converted by the plant into sugars or starches with oxygen and water being byproducts. If we look at photosynthesis as a building process, then respiration is a breaking down process. Respiration is the process by which sugars are converted to energy through an oxidative reaction. The overall process is shown here. Sugars are broken down, releasing energy that is used for cell growth and building plant tissue. Respiration occurs in all cells. This table summarizes the differences between photosynthesis and respiration. Photosynthesis captures energy, respiration uses energy. Photosynthesis uses water while respiration produces water. Photosynthesis uses carbon dioxide while respiration produces carbon dioxide. Photosynthesis occurs in the light while respiration can occur under light or dark conditions. Photosynthesis releases oxygen while respiration uses oxygen. It is oxygen that is important in aerobic root respiration and the limiting factor under anaerobic conditions. We will focus on the role of oxygen in respiration. As previously mentioned, respiration occurs in all plant cells, including root cells. Roots are important in water and nutrient absorption. Without energy released from respiration, no new root cells or tissue is produced, nor water or nutrients are actively absorbed. Oxygen plays an important role as a final electron acceptor in the electron transport chain, the major system for the release of energy necessary for healthy root activity. As a quick overview, the release of energy down the electron transport system starts with an electron donor, NADPH. The electrons from NADPH are passed down to a series of enzymatic electron acceptors and donors shown here by the yellow circles. As the electrons are passed down to an electronegative acceptor, then passed down further, energy is released as an oxidative reaction. This continues down the chain until it reaches oxygen, the most electronegative and terminal acceptor. This figure summarizes the process that we just watched. The net effect is that 36 ATP molecules are produced that provide energy to the plant, in, the, in this case roots, to grow and function in wa as water and nutrient absorption. Given that oxygen is involved, we term this aerobic respiration. There is a second energy producing pathway called glycolysis, which is an anaerobic reaction not requiring oxygen. As you can see, glycolysis produces two ATP in relation to the 36 by aerobic respiration. Where soils become anaerobic due to the lack of oxygen in the root zone, the turf often yellows and loses density. If we look at this from a plant energy status, we can understand why the turf is suffering. In this situation, aerobic res respiration is not occurring in the roots, only anaerobic respiration, which is basically producing one eighteenth of the energy that would be produced under aerobic conditions. The yellowing and thinning is due in part to the inability of the plant to generate enough energy to actively absorb nutrients. Regarding water, if the plant is not producing enough energy to actively take up water, it will literally wilt, even if there is plenty of water in and around the plant. This is termed wet wilt. 
anaerobic conditions can develop in poorly drained areas and on compacted soils. Typical soils are comprised of 25% air, 25% water, and 50% minerals or the solid portion. When a soil is compacted, it is the air portion that decreases while the water component increases along with the solid particles. Besides compacted and poorly drained soils, areas that have poor air circulation and thus less evapotranspiration can retain water and moisture longer. Shallow rooted turf grasses are susceptible to anaerobic conditions. This tea was comprised mainly of Poe annua, a shallow rooted turf grass that was killed under anaerobic soil conditions. To reduce the likelihood of turf loss due to anaerobic soil conditions, practices should be targeted to increase oxygen in the soil by increasing air spaces or by minimizing water saturated soil conditions. Drainage, drainage both internal and surface drainage is important in removing water. If you look closely at this screen, you can see the straight lines where drain lines were installed. Coring is a method of opening the soil to increase oxygen or air levels in the soil. During summer stress, it is often common to core with small tines to increase air in the soil. Increasing air movement around the turf can increase evapotranspiration and help reduce the period of time soils remain saturated. In conclusion, aerobic respiration is critical to turf survival during summer stress periods. Root zones that promote and enhance air exchange will maintain healthier turf.